Good morning, Alabama. It's an honor and a privilege to be here today at this place. While I was working on deciding what I wanted to say last night, I came across a quote by Adela Rogers St. John's. She said, I wish women would stand together and shackle the men who want to move us backwards. And folks, my friends and fellow Alabamians, that's what we're here to do. Now, we all know the Alabama legislature isn't known for passing the kind of legislation that would make it stand in the front and be admired by other states. <laughs> oh no, heavens to Betsy. Do a thing like that? No. Our legislature is known for passing the kind of legislation that gets its attention from the national news and not for the right reasons. John Stewart's even dedicated sections of The Daily Show to us. <laughs> but does our legislature know that Alabama is the punchline to every joke about every horrible, asinine, outlandish law? Well, they must not, because they, they, they've been back at it this session once again. But bless their hearts, they just don't know any better. <laughs> Let's look at the Fetal Heartbeat Act. This law makes it illegal for a physician to perform an abortion after a heartbeat has been detected. Now, as a mother to two children, I can tell you this, that banning abortion at six weeks would make no sense because many women, myself included, don't even know they're pregnant at that point. A doctor won't even, even have a, a Doppler test to determine if there is a heartbeat because it's just not recognized that there will find one at less than six weeks. Laws similar to Alabama's Beetle Heartbeat Act have been stopped by courts in Arkansas and North Dakota. Federal judges have already found them to be unconstitutional under the standards established in Roe. Why would Alabama legislators want to continue to push legislation that shows a likelihood of suffering the same fate here? Well, bless their hearts, they just don't know any better. There's legislation to shut down Huntsville's clinic. It seeks to prevent a, an abortion clinic within 2,000 feet of the property or campus of a public school. Folks, that's the standard we apply to sex offenders. What does that say? The state of Alabama is trying to tell women seeking to procure a legal medical procedure, sister, we look at you as a sex offender, a criminal. What do they claim is the need for such legislation? Put women in their place. Exactly. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Madison County Assistant DA Becker stated to members of the Alabama House Health Committee, and I quote, I've seen the signs that are held up with pictures of aborted fetuses. I have seen the confrontations. He even went on to ask the committee to push the abortion through so they can have their abortion clinic someplace else. Well, Mr. Becker, if the pictures and confrontations are so offensive to your sensitive nature, how about asking the protesters to take their distasteful signs elsewhere? Yeah. Another person went on to testify the clinic should be required to move because they attract violence, such as shootings and violence that have occurred at other clinics. It seems to me that maybe we should punish the ones doing the actual criminal activity instead of hurting women seeking and A lot of Alabama legislators want to push legislation to make the women seeking the legitimate procedures that have been deemed constitutional since 1973 criminals. Oh, bless their hearts. They just don't know any better, do they? <laughs> The Health Care Rights of Conscious Act would allow health care professionals to, reform to, to refuse to perform services such as abortion, sterilization, human cloning, and human embryonic stem cell, stem cell research. They, did, they want to allow doctors to determine what violates their conscience on religious or ethical grounds. Do the Hippocratic Oath much? The oath reads in part, I will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures which are required. It doesn't go on to say, except where it offends me. No. In fact, in the 1960s, the oath was rewritten to make it a more secular obligation. There are Christian versions of the oath explicitly prohibiting abortion, yet a vast majority of medical schools have expressly omitted that, that addition in the oath they administer to their medical schools. This much I know. As a lawyer, I took on an oath to uphold the Constitution. Not uphold the Constitution, except the parts that offend me. I took an oath to uphold the Constitution as written and as interpreted by case law administrated by the judicial branch. As opposed to what Chief Justice Roy Moore would have you believe, that means all the law as it stands. Woo! are to provide services 
services to those in need of their assistance and medical expertise. And if a doctor feels they cannot do so, maybe they should seek a new line of work. Perhaps politics. <laughs> what makes the Alabama legislature think they can give a pass to doctors to violate that most precious oath they also take as a public statement promising to help those in need? What makes them think they know better than the doctors? Well, you know what's next. Bless their hearts, they just don't know any better. And the cost of litigation to defend laws such as these? In 2011, Kansas spent nearly $400,000 in legal bills in just six months defending anti-abortion laws. Since 2011, Kansas has spent $1.2 million to defend anti-abortion legislation. A law signed just last month is expected to cost the state an additional $350,000 to $450,000. As of January 2014, North Dakota had spent $200,000 defending anti-abortion laws. Arizona, $297,000. South Dakota, $378,000. Texas, $650,000. And like Kansas, Idaho spent over $1 million. Now folks, I don't have to tell you this, Alabama does not have that kind of money to be thrown around. That's money that could be better spent funding family, ser family planning services, and the Guttmacher Institute found for every public dollar invested in family planning, taxpayers save seven dollars. Think about it. Focusing on family planning creates fewer pregnancies. As a result, less money is spent on, by states on abortion, miscarriages, maternity care, infant care. The Institute found 2.2 million unplanned pregnancies were prevented in 2010 alone. That resulted in a government savings of, get ready, 13.6 billion in 2010, or $7.09 for every public dollar spent. Oh, it's so easy, even an Alabama legislator should be able to get it. <laughs> Yet many Republicans sitting right here in Montgomery today just can't seem to understand. Oh, bless their hearts, they just don't know any better. <laughs> Having said all that, let me close with a quote from a personal shero of mine, the late, the great Governor Ann Richards. If you can't fill the till, then don't pass the bill. It may serve the Alabama legislature well to listen to Governor Richards, but, well, bless their hearts, they just don't know any better. Thank you. <laughs>